Hello everyone, uh, this is my first tutorial so bear with me and all the, the ums and ahs. Um, okay, so basically I'm going to show you how to remove dust on a lens from your video clips. This happened to me recently while filming a gig and uh, if you've ever filmed this kind of thing in the past you'll know that clubs are usually dank in dusty places and uh, Getting the occasional speck of dust on your lens can be quite common. Um, and one of the problems with shooting in HD on tiny LCD screens is sometimes you just don't notice. Anyway, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So here is a clip from the gig I was talking about. Um, I'll go full screen, let you zoom in, have a little look at what I'm actually talking about. And there we are. It's not very big, but when you cut back and forth, uh, you know, during the course of the the gig, it you know it does become noticeable and can be quite distracting. And for me, anyway, you know, ruins the experience. Okay, so first things first. Um, you've got to go, got to go to File, Export, and we're going to render off the video as a JPEG sequence so that you can edit each of the frames. Not individually, that would take forever, but um, I'll show you how we do that when we get to it. When naming your files, okay, make sure that you don't exceed 8 characters in length. Also, the folders, and this includes any subfolders as well, make sure they don't exceed 8 characters in length as well. I'll explain this when, it, when we get to actually rendering it back and the whole reasoning behind this. In your render settings, make sure that you're rendering as high a quality as possible and also matching the frame rate of the, the original clip. Um, this is to minimise generational loss and make sure the clip will actually play back properly. Okay, so I'll just click on render and away we go. Okay, so once we've rendered off the, the JPEG sequence, um, we'll fire up Adobe Bridge and begin editing. Um, so open up the folder, you save the JPEGs to, there we are, from there you select the first frame, right click, open camera raw, select your spot removal tool and click it over the dust spot you want fixed. You can adjust the size and also where you're taking the sample from on the on the JPEG, just to try and get it match up as best as possible. And as you can see, the spot is gone. So since the dust spot is in the same place in every frame of every shot, what we're going to do is right click the edited image, develop settings, and we'll copy the settings. Then you select all, go to develop settings again, and paste settings onto every single frame that you've rendered off in the image sequence. Now make sure that you're only copying over the, the spot removal so keep that ticked and click OK. Wait for the changes to take effect and we'll click on an image at random just to see, see the result. And as you can see the spot is now gone. So what you need to do is export the images and get them back into a video. So, first stage of that is you go to File, Export, and again, make sure you're rendering at as high quality as possible to avoid any degradation of, or generational loss. Okay, so now that we've fixed our JPEGs, uh, we've got them in the new folder, we'll now have to convert them back to video. For this, we use QuickTime Pro. Now, Remember I said not to go over 8 characters when you were naming the file? Well, this is because Apple programmers, um, for some reason, um, decided it wouldn't be a good idea to allow the names longer than that length. Um, you'll get an error message if you try, um, so I suggest you don't. Now in QuickTime Pro, go to File, Open Image Sequence. Go to the correct folder and select the first file. Again from the drop down menu, make sure to select the correct frame rate or your video won't play back properly. And you click open from there. 
after a short wait we have our image sequence ready to play um, don't worry if it doesn't play back perfectly it will once it's exported and which we are going to do now so go to file export from there we name our file and click on the options and then from there under video we go to settings and for compression we want to go for as lossless a format as possible so I recommend either TechSmith and Sharpen or if you don't have the codec like me uh, go to PNG again make sure all the quality settings are up at full um, and click OK then we are ready to save and a short wait later you should have a video and from here we it's just a case of bring up your Premiere Pro project and replace the file in your timeline and as you can see the spot is gone now as I mentioned earlier at least twice um, you know, adding generations is unfortunately unavoidable during this whole process. Um, we have tried to minimise loss wherever we can, um, but you know, unfortunately, you know, some will occur. Um, I suggest that uh, you use a product like um, Neat Video to take care of some of the additional grain added and also to perform some uh, subtle sharpening. I use it all the time and I highly recommend it. So uh, I'll leave it at that. That pretty much concludes this tutorial. Um, I hope that you found it helpful. Um, your comments, as always, are welcome. And uh, if you fancy, could you please check out my website? Thank you.